What's good, everybody? Professor Peters back at it again with another video. Today, we're talking about how to multiply fractions, and I'm going to give you guys three different scenarios and explain how to properly multiply fractions. So let's start off with just uh, multiplying a fraction with another fraction. So the way that we do this, guys, or the way that I'm going to teach you today is really simple. We're going to break it down into basically two, two to three steps. And what we need to understand, right, is that when we're multiplying fractions, they do not have to have the same denominator and we could still multiply. So what we're going to do is the first step is, can we reduce any of our fractions? And we can reduce two over four, right? We can make this a smaller fraction as in one over two. So we simplified in that first step, or we checked to see if we could simplify. After we checked to see if we could simplify, right, now we're going to just multiply the fractions, meaning I'm multiplying straight across top number with top number, bottom number with bottom number. And as a result, we're going to get 3 over 16. And typically, after we're multiplying, the last step is to check to see if we could simplify again. And in this problem, we cannot simplify. And just to show you guys real quick why we check in the first step if we could simplify is we make it easier for ourselves, right? As in, we don't have to simplify at the end. So if I did not simplify, I would have got 6 over 32. And then when I check to see if I could simplify, I would divide the bottom and top by 2 to get the same fraction. So this is why I like to teach it in three steps. Simplify first, if possible. Multiply. And then check again to see if you could simplify. So after that now, guys, we're going to go into one more problem. So in our second problem, we're going to do the same exact steps. So what it tells us to do is to take negative 3 over 4, and we want to multiply this with negative 2 over 3. So when I, when I look at this problem at first, we notice that we're multiplying two negative fractions. So multiplying two negative fractions means that our, our product, what we get as an answer is going to be a positive fraction, right? And I noticed that we can't reduce 3 over 4, and we can't reduce 2 over 3. So step 2 tells us, hey, we're now going to multiply. So let's rewrite this, right? And we're going to multiply straight across. And when we do, we're going to get the answer of positive 6 over 12. So step 1, we've checked. We could not simplify any of those fractions. Step two, we multiplied, and now we got our answer. And step three is to check if we could simplify. And when we look at 6 over 12, right, that is the same thing as 1 half. So if we divide the top and bottom by 6, we are going to get 1 half as an answer. So this is the basic way that we multiply fractions, okay? And as a, as a recap, just remember, they do fractions when we're multiplying do not have to have the same denominator, all right? Once we understand that, we're going to simplify if possible, multiply straight across, and then the last step is just to see if we could simplify again after multiplying, okay? All right, so now my, 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 second, my second topic for today is how to multiply improper fractions. And I'm sorry, not improper fractions, but what we're focusing on is how to multiply whole numbers with fractions. I'm sorry. So what we're going to do, we're going to write down our example. And our first example is going to be 5 multiplied. Oops. This is a whole number. We have 5 multiplied by 8 over 10. So with, with this step two, guys, I am going to teach this to you guys in three steps. So step number one, we're going to identify our whole number. So in this problem, the whole number is five. 
So after we identify our whole number, we're going to turn it into a fraction. And the way we turn it into a fraction is we're going to put it over 1. Okay? So now we put it over 1. So now we have two fractions. And now the process is going to go back to just multiplying fractions. So the hardest part about this is just remembering, hey, make sure that you turn your whole number into a fraction. And now once we do this, we're going to go over to step two. And step two tells us to multiply our two fractions. Okay? All right. So now we go through, we multiply. We're going to get 40 over 10. So step one, turn it, the whole number into a fraction. Step two, we multiply numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator. And now that we get our answer, we're going to check to see if we could simplify. And just understand that simplify means can we reduce this fraction? And I know that 40 divided by 10 is just 4. So my final answer for this problem would just be 4. But now what we're going to do, we're, we're going to go into a second problem. And I want to make this problem a little bit more challenging because typically when we're multiplying whole numbers with fractions, we're not going to get a whole number as an answer. We'll probably get an improper fraction or a mixed number or something of that sort. So let's go back now and let's look at our second example. And let's see how multiplying this whole number with a fraction is different from the problem we just did. So in our second problem, they want us to multiply the whole number 6. And we're going to times that by 4 over 5. So at this step here, guys, right? Multiplying the whole number with a fraction. Step number one is to turn that whole number into a fraction. So we're going to put it over 1. Yes, it'll always be over 1. Because any number divided by 1 is just going to be itself. So the value did not change. We just now have a fraction. Okay? So at this step here, right, turn it into a fraction. We're now going to multiply straight across. So once I do, I'm going to get 24 over 5. So let's just pause right here. In the previous problem, I just told you guys, hey, majority of the times when we multiply a whole number with a fraction, we're probably going to get some type of improper fraction as an answer. So this is what I'm talking about. So now what we are going to do is we're going to take this problem and try to identify or figure out what is its improper fraction. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let's think about it, right? How many times can 5 go into 24 without going over the number 24? And we should know the closest we could get to 24 without going over it is multiplying 5 times 4 to get 20. So we know that 5 goes into 24 four times, right? And once we subtract, all right, we have 24, we subtract that 20. We're going to have four left over, and we're going to put that all over our denominator. So 24 divided by 5, when we're talking about mixed numbers, this is going to give us 4 and 4 fifths, right? 5 goes into 24 four times. That gives us 20, and we have 4 out of 5 left over. So this is what I mean, guys, when we're saying, hey, we're multiplying a whole number with a fraction, all right? And the last topic or the third topic that I'm going to touch on today is how do we multiply two mixed numbers? And I'm going to show you guys exactly how we do that process. Let's get started on, our, on, on this now. All right, so... In this section of uh, the video, what we're working with is we're going to be working with the problem 2 and 1 fourth. 
and we are going to multiply this by two and one ninth. Okay. And the way that we're going to start this problem off is we need to turn this fraction, we need to turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. And I did a little bit of research for you guys to see if I could come up with something that's easy to remember. So we're gonna do what we call the C method, okay? So that means we're going to multiply the denominator and the whole number, and then we're gonna add the numerator on top, all right? And just understand that the denominator is going to stay the same. So this first fraction is going to be over 4, and this second fraction is going to be over 9. The denominators do not change. So when we talk about this C method, right, 4 times 2 gives me 8, 8 plus 1 gives me 9. All right? So now this is an improper fraction. The values are the same. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 2 and 1 ninth. Right, draw my C for the C method, multiply whole number and denominator, and then you add the top. So now we have 18 when we multiply, and then when we add one, we're gonna have 19. All right, so now we did the very first step when we're talking about multiplying mixed numbers. We turn both our fractions into improper fractions. Now at this step, we can multiply, right? But when it comes to multiplying, do we want to, well, let's stop right there. What I would suggest that we do is when we have large numbers like 19, is to try to see if we could cross cancel. So I could cross cancel with these nines and reduce this to one so that when we multiply straight across, it is easier for us to reduce the fraction. So what does Mr. Peters mean? Instead of doing 9 times 19, I'm going to do 1 times 19, and I'm going to get 19 as an answer, and this is all over 4 times 1, which is 4. All right? So now we've multiplied, and understand a lot of these steps are going to be repetitive, even if it's different type of problems. So now that we've multiplied, do you guys see how now we're going to have to simplify like in our previous two methods? Exactly. So now I'm saying to myself, how many times can 4 go into 19 without going over it? And we should know that 4 times 4, right? That's going to give us 16. So we know that 4 goes into 19 at least 4 times, and we're going to have 17, 18, 19. We're going to have 3 out of 4 left over. So once we simplify this fraction, reduce the fraction, however you want to, whatever word you want to use, the same thing, our answer should be four and three quarters, right? Because if we add one more, 20 over four, that would just be five, right? This is the four that's considered one, that would be five. So just please understand, guys, when we're talking about reducing fractions and simplifying and turning improper fractions into mixed numbers. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna do one more problem for practice, and then we're gonna wrap our video up today. If you guys have enjoyed this video or enjoyed what we put out today, you found it helpful, we're gonna ask that you smash the like button for us, comment down below on anything that you guys found interesting in our video today. All right, so the last problem, right, we are gonna have, one and two thirds, and we're going to multiply this mixed number by four and one eight. So rule number one, we have two mixed numbers. We must turn them into improper fractions. So we utilize the C method, right? All right, so step one, turn the mixed number into improper fraction. So three times one gives me three. When we add two, we're gonna get five over three. And we're gonna multiply this by four times eight, which is 32, plus one, which will be 33. And this is all over eight because the denominators will not change during this process, okay? So now, after we have 
switch those fractions from mixed to improper, the next thing we want to do is multiply. But before we multiply, let's check to see if we can simplify. Because we want to work with smaller numbers, if possible. So at this step right here, I noticed that I could cross cancel these two, right? So if I divide both of them by 3, I'll have a 1 down here and an 11 up here. So now when we multiply, those numbers that we're working with for the fraction are going to be so much smaller. So we get 5 times 11, which will give us 55. And this is all over 1 times 8, which is 8. Now remember, guys, we have an improper fraction, and we're not done with this problem, even though we multiplied the fraction. What we want to do at this instance is to now simplify by reducing. But just remember, right, 56 divided by 8 is equal to 7, right? So we know that when we're talking about reducing, we know that 8 could go into 55 at least 6 times, right? At least 6 times without going over 55. So what that means is we're trying to figure out what is left over. So from 55, we subtract 48. And what we're going to get is 7 as a remainder. So this would be our answer once we reduce our fraction. 6 and then 7 out of 8, right? If we go up to 56, then this would basically be 7, all right? So thank you guys for joining us today. This is our review on multiplying fractions. We hope you found this video helpful. If you did, smash the like button for us. Comment down below. We will probably introduce this or include this, I should say, on our live stream. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am Professor Peters.